Uh, and now we are very lucky to have um, Carlos Sanchez, who I'm sure many of you in the Kubernetes community know uh, from many years of work at CloudBeast, um, but fairly recently has moved to Adobe. And um, we were just sort of chatting about, uh, yeah, that experience and um, what it means to have GitOps there. And uh, I think it's important as we've talked about, uh, hopefully you've uh, caught some of the keynotes. If not, if you're registered, you will get the recordings and early access. So make sure that you have registered for this event. Um, but you will see that the, um, a lot of the talking points have been around sort of, um, you know, some four key check boxes to check for what may be taking full advantage of um, what GitOps has been today and what it can be into the future. Um, but everybody's on a journey, everybody's got different things, and everybody, a lot of people have maybe some custom GitOps that they've put together. Um, so really fortunate to have Carlos here to share his story and some of the ways that, yeah, you might have some custom tooling, um, some things work along the way, some things just work for your environment, um, but it's, it's, it's a journey, it's a path. So I think it's really important to share these, this range of stories. So again, hey, please, uh, Take your time for Carlos and you'll have some time for questions. So we'll jump in at the end and I will be monitoring the Slack channel. So please uh, add them there. So with that, I'll hand it over to Carlos. Thank you, Damal. Let me share my screen. Um, thank you for having me. Um, so if you are here today, you're probably either a believer on uh, GitOps or you are trying to find ways to convince your teammates, maybe your boss. So I'm going to try to share a bit of what we do at my team at Adobe. And not only the how we are doing things with regarding to GitOps, but also why, right? So we can, you can share this and and maybe convince people in a, in a better, in an easier way. So I have, uh, oops. I am a cloud engineer at uh, the Adobe Experience Manager Cloud Service, a product that we run on, on the cloud and was announced recently. And in the past lives, I did a lot of open source uh, contributions and uh, Related to this, um, I started the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin, but also in my in the past, I've done a lot of things with uh, like Apache Foundation and, and other open source projects. So why GitOps? Well, I th I'm a big fan of automation, so I think uh, GitOps it's a way to try to automate as much uh, as, as much as possible, as many things as possible. And it's great. It's a great way to avoid manual steps and uh, I don't know, trying to do less work and also try to do less manual work that is prone to errors. So what we do at, uh, at Adobe, we are using Kubernetes. You probably have heard of it um, eventually. So we use Kubernetes for a lot of things on the cloud and uh, we run at a decent scale i mean we have many clusters we have many regions and also not only kubernetes but also um, related services and, and infrastructure that goes with it so we try to to use GitOps as far as many of these things as possible what are the benefits of using GitOps? For me, I think the, the main benefit we see in our team is uh, a full view across all the systems. Uh, we have many different services running, many clusters, um, regions, and many things in general. And it's very nice for a developer to be able to go to a Git repository or for a SRE or somebody that's in call and have a good view of what it's running. Uh, at any point in time, right? It's, not, it's a lot easier than, than having to cobble together different places or looking at different clusters or something like that. So not only for what it's running now, but how it evolved over time. And we use YAML for a lot of the configuration. YAML, you know, everybody loves YAML. Who doesn't? And uh, not only we use uh, standard YAML, but also um, custom defined. So standard YAML, I, I call it standard YAML things like 
Kubernetes definitions. We store that on Git. We use for some things we use customize and Helm charts and all of these ends in Git. But also the custom define is we have services that use different APIs that don't, uh, or, or we have uh, files that span across multiple services. So we want one file that maybe define uh, DNS, uh, maybe uh, C, uh, CDN and a few other things. And we pack that into one uh, with our custom, uh, one file with our custom, uh, like a schema, let's say. So we use both and we store all of it. And if the service doesn't uh, take a specific type of file, uh, we create our own and, and then we, we apply it just to make sure that everything is, is on Git. With all that state in Git, we obviously we want to do this reconciliation that is like the key of GitOps. We want this uh, desired state in Git to automatically be checked against uh, what is running on, on these services. So for that, we use different scripts and different uh, pipelines that will um, take that state and call APIs and do whatever is necessary to make sure that it gets applied as fast as possible to, to the production or the environments that needs to be. I mean, what we are trying to achieve is reduce the time from, uh, from development uh, to production. So the changes are seen quicker and uh, that way we can find errors and uh, any issues, we catch them as soon as possible. Obviously we get the traceability using Git, Git logs, Git blame, anything you can see what happened, when happened, who did it, and, and then you can, you can get more information than just if, if you were not using uh, something, uh, some um, source control. Right? Also for pull requests, this allows us to uh, run tests before things are merged. We can run validation. We could deploy to different environments and see that things uh, work fine before uh, actually merging them. So that's another typical uh, benefit from source control that you can get uh, on, on with GitOps. And continuous delivery, like in the sense that every time I change something on Git, I get a uh, Git commit, a uh, Git event, and this triggers Jenkins pipelines uh, that we use that test and deploy these definitions. Obviously, Git pull requests, but also masters. And then these pipelines can do a bunch of different things. Uh, but then the end result of this, these changes get, uh, get promoted to the to production and the different environments. What we, do we use GitOps for, right? Uh, Typical use case is applications. You have uh, applications defined in Git, and this is getting automatically deployed across clusters and namespace. We used it uh, for, for a bunch of services. And we realized that uh, a push model wouldn't work for us. At, as soon as you have some amount of scale, push model doesn't really work. And then we have a, more of a pool model, right? The, the pipelines push these Git configurations somewhere. And then from inside the clusters, we have, um, we have services that pull the configurations and reapply the changes as needed to, to this, to this, names, uh, to this uh, namespace, Kubernetes environments, and so on. With that, we switch to an asynchronous distributed model. Um, we lose a bit, you lose a little bit of visibility, um, but uh, you get a lot more speed and the visibility you gain it by using monitoring, by using uh, alerts and things like that, that you need to know when any of this uh, is uh, breaks for whatever reason. But we don't only use it for, infra uh, for applications, we also use it for infrastructure. So 
you could use Terraform or any of the cloud providers, uh, infrastructure as code things like CloudFormation, ARM, cloud, Google Cloud Deployment Manager. And then what we do is we react and changes uh, to the Git repositories and uh, deploy and update the infrastructure as needed. There's a thin line between um, GitOps and infrastructure as code, right? Uh, I have, uh, we were discussing this the other day. And it's it, uh, GitOps, is it infrastructure as code? Well, uh, I think it's the, a bit more like GitOps needs infrastructure as code because you need to store things in Git or, or your source control. Uh, well, um, well, the um, infrastructure as code is very nice, but you don't really need to store things on Git, or you could, and you don't need to actually apply them automatically. I mean, you could have stored your Terraform scripts in Git and then just uh, manually run them when you change them or whatever, right? So GitOps kind of brings the, CI, the CD to, to the infrastructure as code part the reconciliation loops and, and, and so. Other things that are more, I guess, less common out there is uh, we use uh, GitOps for DNS. Uh, we have for some YAML files that define what DNS records we need to create for the users, and we store them in Git. And uh, every time they change, uh, this triggers an event, a pipeline, we use templating to transform this uh, DNS configuration into, um, into the type of uh, document that the DNS API service that we use uh, needs. And the, the same we do for, for CDN. We all have our own uh, definitions on Git, and then we use templating and Jenkins pipelines, and we call the CDN provider APIs. And that way we can have all these things, applications, infrastructure, DNS, CDN, they are all storing it. Not only that, but also I mean things like Grafana configuration, Prometheus configuration, we also we also use uh, GitOps for them. But a lot of times you see here about GitOps and it's like, oh, I just somebody goes and change something on Git and then this triggers uh, different um, events. But it's, it's not just for humans, at least not in our case. Uh, we have um, changes coming from user interface, from APIs, and also from humans like developers, SREs, people on call that need to make changes. So we, uh, we use GitOps to have a consistent and always up-to-date view. So all these changes down through UI and APIs, they get uh, the end in Git. So we can have this, this, con uh, this uh, consistent view. And for that, uh, we, use, uh, we use APIs or we use messaging queues between the different systems that uh, take those uh, events, like a, a user goes to the UI, clicks on some actions, that translates into a message. That message, uh, we use, uh, Jen there's a plugin for Jenkins that you can uh, like run jobs based on, on messages. We also have microservices that do that. And we listen to these messages, um, these API calls, and we transform that into Git commit. And this Git commit gets uh, applied to the repository, and then the, the like GitOps pipeline uh, runs. So we merge all these events from different places, centralize on, on a Git repository, and then uh, span out to the to the pipeline to deploy. Them. And so far, our experience in my team with GitOps has been pretty nice, so we can highly recommend it. And if you have any questions, you can, I think there's some time for questions, or you can hit me on Twitter, and I'll try my best to answer. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much.
Let me just give uh, Stacy, our producer, a second because I just hopped on in. Hopefully she's gotten the stream working. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we do have some questions in our Slack. So reminder to people, if you're listening uh, on YouTube Live, um, we're monitoring the questions in our Slack. So hopefully you can see the links for that. And um, if we go over time, some of the speakers can hang out and answer your questions. Uh, so there's one early one. It's more of a comment joke, but it'd be funny. I'd like to see Photoshop run on Kubernetes. <laughs> That'd be a nice one. Um, and another one, sorry? I don't know if it does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so one was, um, so is your DevOps and GitOps process transparent to your developers? Or are your developers involved in the Kubernetes GitOps and DevOps process? So is it a team effort? I think that's a great question. Thank you, Jean-Luc, for that. Um, so the team, the whole product team is very big. So there's people that are just users of this setup. So they don't know anything about it. They just use APIs and whatever they need. And they're not aware of what's happening behind the scenes. Then there's other parts of the teams, of sub teams that we are aware of or we build it, right? So there's people. Like, like everything, there's some services that are used uh, directly, some services are like higher level and there's people at different levels. Excellent. And one last one before we break, um, how do you manage secrets? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we use uh, some secret management tools. Like, I mean, uh, you can use uh, HashiCorp Vault, you can use your cloud provider. I mean, there's, there's options there. In Kubernetes, you can you have secrets in Kubernetes. You can also use Kubernetes integrations with Vault and with your cloud provider secrets. So we use those. Oh, you use all of them at Adobe? Uh, you can use Jenkins secrets credentials too. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it very much. Uh, got some thumbs. Um, maybe one last one. It looks like we have time. Uh, what are your recommendations for change management? Well, um, just do everything in Git and do pull requests and stuff like that. I don't know, that's a, that, that could be a long question, a long answer. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> so with that, do you have a few minutes if a few people have coming in to join the Slack channel to answer some of these that might be yeah. a little bit more involved? Okay, excellent. So thank you again. Thanks for all your questions. And thanks for also some of the other speakers who've still been uh, in the chat room and uh, talking with the audience. So